Welcome! I'm Giulia and today's class is really interesting. Are you ready to start? Let's go! Today we talk about compositing. This is one of my favorite Photoshop techniques. It's one of the most advanced. However, it's also one of the most useful. If you learn how to do compositing, you will really elevate your food photography. Um, you will be able to work with bigger clients because a lot of the time in advertising and commercial photography, clients will expect you to learn and know compositing, how to do it in Photoshop, how to shoot for compositing. Your mindset needs to switch when you're shooting to create a composite image. And again, on a commercial and advertising photo shoot, your clients will expect you to know about this and to shoot with the idea that you're going to create composites in post-production. So let's, let's see the fundamentals and let's learn how to do it. But what's compositing? Compositing, it's an editing technique that is used to blend two or more images together to create one final stunning shot. Sometimes you can't achieve everything you want at the same time in one shot, so you need to be able to think compositing. <laughs> It's a mindset. Compositing is a mindset. As you're shooting, you need to know that you're going to create a composite. So for example, the image of the cake, it's a composite of six images. One image for the main background, one image for the cake, and all the other images were different parts and different sparkles. Because I wanted the cake to be really sparkly and I couldn't just get all the sparkles that I wanted in one shot. So I was I shot multiple images, each of which had a little sparkle that I really liked. And then I put them all together and that's the final result. The hot chocolate here, it's a composite of two images, one for the whole background, glass, chocolate and props and everything. And another image I used for the cream because the cream died on me. So obviously, like um, I, it took me a while to set up the light and all of that. So I only took the cream out of another image where it looked its best. And the mint spice here, it's a composite of four images. One for the blurry fairy light background, another one for the icing sugar coming down, another image for the mean spy, the actual subject, because after getting all of that sugar, they were completely covered in sugar. So I had to grab an image that I shot like previously before all the sugar came down to have the mean spy is looking super nice. And a fourth one, I don't really remember, but it's a composite of four images. So when you shoot for compositing, there are some things you need to keep in mind and let's see what they are. So when might compositing come and be really helpful for you? First of all, if the food dies, maybe you're asked to shoot different subjects and each of these subjects need to look fresh or as fresh as possible. And by the time you've prepared the third or the fourth subject, the first one is long dead. So you can't really get everything that you need, every subject looking its best in one shot, uh, but you have to shoot each subject individually and then merge them together um, with compositing. So the food dies, or if you want to multiply yourself, for example, if you want to create a scene where it looks like there's a table with a lot of people around and you're by yourself, then what you can do is shoot multiple images with your hands doing different things. And then you combine them in post-production to make, to like pretend and cheat a little bit to pretend that there are more people around, or you want to multiply objects same concept. Um, maybe you have all the fairy lights and you want to multiply the fairy lights in the background or you multiply like uh, leaves uh, or berries or like any anything, anything really. You want to correct the composition. So sometimes, for example, in this picture of the mince pies with the knife, 
I also shot another image without the knife to keep it brand free because obviously this was a client shoot and a product shot. So obviously they wanted their product in the frame. However, I also wanted a neutral image for my own portfolio without their product in it. So what I did was I shot another image without the knife and then I composited that image into this image so basically to remove the knife i could have done it with cloning but the results would have been much worse and you would have seen like a patch uh, with the cloning stamp tool or using other techniques wouldn't have given me the same brilliant results as uh, compositing so correct the composition get rid of objects you clean spills and mess because for example if you're shooting splashes uh, maybe the be you get a beautiful splash that will go into the final image only as a uh, maybe like fifth or tenth attempt. And in the meantime, your background is covered in splashes and water and all sorts of things. So what you want to do is you want to shoot one gr good image for the background at the very beginning. And then you start splashing, splashing, splashing. So that basically what you can do is take that first image with a beautiful pristine background and then composite the good splash image on top of the clean background to create the perfect image that has a clean background as well as a great splash. There are a few pieces of equipment that might be useful for you when creating compositing. One main, like the most important piece of equipment if you want to create composites is a tripod. Because obviously, when you create composites, nothing in your frame um, can really change that much. The angle needs to be the same. So everything, your camera needs to be completely static for you to be able to properly match your images um, and merge them together. So you are going to need a tripod. You're going to need markers. So, so stuff like coins, blue tack. Lego blocks, toothpicks, uh, you can use whatever works for you. Why do you need these things? If you have your final image set and you need to remove an object for any reason, then you need to mark the exact position where that prop was so that you can put it back in the exact same spot. And this will help you again with the compositing part. Uh, because for example, if you're shooting a coffee, which is the example that I'm going to use to show you how to do it. If you're shooting a coffee and you want um, the glass to be a like, nice color brown and the top of the coffee, you might need a few attempts to get the top of the coffee just right. And you need to hold the glass while you pour the coffee. Then you need to mark the exact location of the glass so that you can take the glass, make the coffee, put the glass back. Perfect. And then shoot it. And then take the glass put the markers, take the glass, make the coffee again, and put the, mar put the cap back exactly where it was. So you can take different pieces from the same glass and it just, it's just gonna work out in uh, Photoshop. Then you need a laptop and a tethering cable uh, because it helps a lot. Uh, if you're doing it on a screen, sometimes you don't realize that things have moved or things have changed. While if you're shooting on a laptop tethered, it's much better. And obviously you're going to need Lightroom and Photoshop to do the actual editing. And then as optional, you can use the self timer or the remote trigger. If you're, for example, shooting yourself, <laughs> as in, if you are shooting your hands, doing different actions and stuff, you might need a self timer or a remote trigger. In terms of fundamental concepts of compositing, as I mentioned, the important thing is having the right mindset and planning for a compositing shot. So if you know that uh, you are shooting a tricky subject that you're going to need to um, merge in Photoshop, then you need to shoot with that idea, which includes planning the shot, like using um, the right equipment, so like markers and stuff, the same angle, same framing, same light, same exposure, same settings, and same focus plane. Because if you change focus, then it's not going to be easy to merge and it's not going to look realistic. 
same if you change light halfway through the compositing, then you can't really merge the images together because the shadows are going to be different, the highlights are going to be different. So when you're shooting for compositing, you need to have this in mind. Very important. It's going to make your job a whole lot easier in, uh, the, in Photoshop. The example that I am uh, showing you today, it's basically uh, this Cortado, Cortado shot. Uh, so obviously coffee is one of those tricky subjects that dies fairly quickly. So uh, while creating this image, we had to remake the coffee multiple times for it to look this good because maybe the first time the, ba the back coffee didn't look that great the foam was bubbly and then uh, the it didn't look as creamy and the color the coffee color didn't have like a, a perfect color and all of these things you need to take into account so what i'm going to show you now is how we create this compositing by merging together all the different uh, pieces. I've shot multiple images for this. Let's go into Photoshop and I will show you how to do it. So we're in Lightroom and today I'm going to show you how I created this image. This is the final image and it's a compositing of four different images. Now, um, what I did here, I took one image for my main background so that is my main image uh, for everything my props my cookies all my other food and the top of my hero coffee then there's a second image that i used for the top of the coffee in the background then there's a third image that i used for the glass the color of the coffee here and the nice line between the coffee and the foam and then there's a fourth image that it's actually only this little bit over here. So what are these images? This is my background image, my main image. So from this one, I really liked the coffee top and everything else, the cookies. But obviously, um, this needs to be redone and a few other bits and pieces. And also what I don't like about the main background image is that the coffee here is not neat there's this like milk spill and the foam is not very nice uh, and also this guy it really bothers me because it's too close to the edge and it's not as nice and all the other ones so once i decided that this is my basic background image then i took this piece this little guy from this image so this is the image number one then i've got this image i really liked how neat the coffee the color of the coffees and the line between the coffee and the foam so that's what i did that's what i took from this image and then from this one i took the back uh, the the <laughs> sorry the top of the back coffee okay but as you can see this one's got three cookies and then i decided that i only wanted two cookies um this one doesn't have a nice top so this uh final image is a compositing of these four now before you move into photoshop what you want to do is you want to edit do a basic edit of your images and you want to develop the raw file so you want to make sure that your white balance and your exposure and your settings and your shadows everything is consistent so as you can see if i flick through them they're very consistent in terms of lighting editing and everything else yes the position changes slightly but we're gonna fix that so this is what you want to do in lightroom and then once you've done that and you've edited your images you select them all you click with two fingers or click with your uh, right right click then you go edit in open as layers in photoshop and then we move on to photoshop now we're in photoshop and we have our images open as layers so as you can see they're all here each and every one great so now what do we do first thing we want to do is we already know what our base image is because we've decided this uh in lightroom so i know that my background image is this one so i'm going to rename this background when you do compositing it's it's quite important to keep 
the, um, the layers panel organized so that you know exactly which piece you're taking from which image. So from this image, I know I'm only going to take that little guy. Um, so this one I am going to call little guy. <laughs> little guy drop. Okay. Uh, whatever works for you, really. Make it fun. <laughs> From this image, I know I'm going to take the glass and the foam. So this one I am going to call uh, glass for the hero. And from this one, I am going to take the top of the back glass. So I'm going to rename that top background coffee. Um, yeah, just name it whatever works for you. And in terms of ordering the um, the layers, again, in this case, it doesn't really matter uh, as long as your background layer is at the bottom. OK, so make sure that your background main layer is at the bottom. OK, so now we start with the actual compositing part. Now, the basic concept of compositing is that you are going to use layers and layer masks to reveal or hide some parts of each layer so that we can um, create one final image and put all of those pieces from each layer on top of our background and by and by using layer masks and brushes we are going to start by um, making invisible every layer that we're not going to work on so we're going to start with our top layer um, and our background. These two are visible. Now, what we want to do is we select the layer and we go ahead and add a layer mask to it. Now, the basic concept about layer masks is that with white, you reveal what's in the layer and with black, you hide what's in the layer. So by pressing now we can see that the layer mask is white by pressing command i on your keyboard or, or control i if you have a, a windows machine what you do is you make the layer mask black which means you're hiding this layer and only showing the background layer so and again if we press command i now it's white which means we're revealing all of this layer and not the background layer just this layer so this is the concept uh, for layer masks and what we are going to do is basically we are going to hide every layer and brush on to the parts of the mask that we are we want to reveal and show in our final image and this is going to be easier done than said so let me show you how to do this so create a layer mask first then press Command I to invert the layer mask. So we've hidden everything. Now we press B or we go here and we select our brush tool. Uh, and with the brush tool, we are going to paint over the part that we want to reveal. Now, first things first. What settings should we use for the brush tool? Opacity, 100, because if you go any lower, what happens is that you're only going to reveal a very faint part of the, the image, and that's not what you want. You want opacity to be at 100, so that one brush stroke, you get nice definition on there. And flow is basically just the speed of the brush, so whatever works for you, really. Um, and then here, you want the hardness to be at about 50%. You don't want the edges to be super, super sharp uh, because it, this way it's going to be easy, easier for you to hide uh, mistakes or blend in because we want to blend it in to make sure that it looks natural and it doesn't look, to, uh, it doesn't look like it's painted on top, right? Now, basic concept with brushes, again, it's that same thing with black and white. Down here, you can select the color of your brush. Now, white painted on a black mask will reveal, right? While if you press X, that will swap your colors down here. Now the brush is black and black will hide. So X to get a white brush that will reveal. X again to get a black brush which will hide. 
Yeah. So by using a combination of black brushes and white brushes, we are going to reveal and hide certain parts. Now I'm using a white brush to reveal the top of the coffee that I really want. There we go. I'm going to do this quickly now because obviously this is just a tutorial, but obviously you can take your sweet time to make sure that everything looks great and everything looks perfect and you can zoom in and like just make sure that the edges don't look painted. You see how easy that was for me to do. And that's because this glass has not moved. That's why it's important to be consistent when you shoot for your compositing, because if things move around, then it's going to be a lot, a lot more difficult for you to paint and make it look realistic. Now I've painted it quite roughly and you can't tell the difference, right? You can't see the edges of where I painted. And that's because nothing else in my scene has moved and my exposure is consistent and everything is consistent. Awesome. Now we can move on to the second layer. This one is the glass. So we want to get this nice glass with the nice line there and paint it on top of our background. Now, as you can see, if I uh, make this visible and invisible, the glass is moving slightly. OK, so this is uh, going to be a little bit more of a challenge for us. That's why we don't want to move anything. But obviously, sometimes that's not possible. So how do we fix this, this problem of slight movement? So you're going to make this layer visible. You're going to drop the opacity to about 50 to 60 percent, whatever, whatever uh, works so that you can see both this layer and the background layer. Then you press B for um, to be able to move the top layer. And what you want to do is move it so that it perfectly matches the background layer so that the edges of the glass match the edges of the glass in the background layer. So that should do it pretty much. So and if you look at it and then you get back the opacity to back to 100. And now if you make it visible and invisible, you should see that the edges of the glass are roughly, roughly the same. Now we want to do the same thing as we did on the, with the top layer. So we are going to create a layer mask on this layer. Command I to make it uh, invisible. So to invert our mask, this one we can switch on just to see how pretty the image is going to look. So Command I to invert the mask and then we press B for our brush and then with the white color, we go and brush the nice coffee onto our glass and the nice line. Now you can zoom in. You can reduce the size of your brush. Obviously, again, this is just a quick tutorial that I'm doing for you guys, but you can take as much time as you need to make sure that you don't get stuff like this, for example. So now I'm going to press X for my black brush and I'm going to paint again over that edge because I, I made a mess there. I also made a mess here. So there we go. Um, I want that edge to be sharp. And also I made a mess here because now it looks like it's fading. So again, take your sweet time and zoom in as much as you need to and use different size brushes to make sure that you do this properly uh, because no one wants, no one wants to see where you painted. So keep going back and forth from pressing X with black, black brush and white brush to make sure that it looks nice. Now that we've done the second piece, so you can see before and after, we are going to go and do work on this little drop here. Again, same concept. We make the layer visible. We add a layer mask to it. Command I to invert the layer mask, B for our brush, white brush, and then we paint. We paint. And again, here, take your sweet time to make sure that wherever you're painting, it's going to look natural. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit, B to go back to my brush, reducing the size of the brush. Here we go. So now that that's kind of like 
you can't tell where one ends and the other one begins. And here again, I'm going to make sure that this line is neat and then I'm going to clean up my mess so that now this kind of looks natural and blended in rather than rather than just patched and Photoshop there. And there is a little bit, whoops, there is a little bit over there. But anyway, so, and now if you select each of these and if you mask, like, and if you do this, then you can go back and see your progress. Ta-da! Now we have our final image. Here's another quick case study for you uh, to see what process goes behind creating a compositing. Uh, this is my final image and this is the image that I started with. This is my background image. I shot this at f5.6 uh, because I wanted all my mean spies to be nice and sharp and also I wanted to make sure that I got a nice action for the sugar here. Uh, but I've got many things that I'm not happy with this final frame. So first things first, I wasn't happy with how sharp the background is. So I shot another frame at f2.8 so that I could basically just grab the background. Can you see how much better the bokeh, uh, he, the bokeh is in the background? The lights are not as sharp. It's a lot more uh, fairy tale like and I really like this. So basically I patched the background from my shot at f2.8 on top of this. Then what I've done is I shot, I took one of my previous images that didn't have as, as much sugar on the pies as you can see. There's a lot of sugar here and it's kind of like covering all the nice top of the pies. So I went back and took one image where there was less sugar powder and I patched it on top of that. And then for my client, again, because I shot this on a shallow depth of field, what happened was that only the front of the blade of the knife was in focus. And as you can see, the handle is a bit blurred. So I did a mini focus stacking here. I shot another image where I focused on the back of the handle and then ta-da, I comped it on top. So now the whole of the knife is sharp. Um, and then I used a, a clone layer to obviously reconstruct this part of the background at the bottom here. And also I used the clone to, go, to get rid of the wire in between the lights and to put some more of those fairy lights because I liked it nice and uh, and uh, jolly. So this was the final image that I delivered to my client. And then obviously, because I really like this image, what I did was I also got rid of the, um, the knife so that I can then reuse this image for something else that doesn't have the product placement, obviously. So here's another little case study for you. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Ciao.